Uh, wa alaikum It's already 3 uh, p.m. So. Let's um, start. We'll start. Anyway, it's not um, a formal presentation or anything. It's just uh, an overview of the uh, emergency medicine programs in Canada. You guys had already had a talk about emergency medicine in Saudi, sir. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we. Um, I could answer um, if you have any questions about our local program, but my main focus will be on the Canadian programs. Do you know this place? Does anyone know? Canada, I assume. Yeah, it's the Par Parliament Hill um, in Ottawa. Um, that's where I was trained. I mean, that's where I did my residency. It's a beautiful place, cold in the winter, but nice in the summer. Okay, so to become an emergency physician in, um, in, um, in Canada, you have to go um, either through the Royal College uh, program, which is five years program. Um, okay, um, or to go through, sorry, or to go, to go through the uh, college of, uh, to, to do family medicine and then a year of emergency medicine. Um, when you do the Royal College, you'll be a specialist in emergency medicine. When you do the family, family medicine and then one year of emergency, you will, be, you will be able to practice emergency medicine, but you are not a specialist in emergency medicine. For Saudis, for us, Saudi, it doesn't matter because you're not gonna do the family plus one because it's not recognized in Saudi. Tamam? All right. So I'm just gonna go through the universities. Um, I know most of them, but not all of them. I have gone through the Royal College website uh, and I'll mention all the names, but uh, I, I am familiar with some of the schools. So I'll start with the capital, Ottawa. The uh, University of Ottawa has an excellent emergency medicine program. It's very famous for research. Um, they have Dr. Steele, if you heard about him, he's one of the uh, most famous emergency medicine researchers. Um, he, um, he developed the uh, clinical decision rules, starting with the Canadian CT head rule, Canadian C-spine rule, Ottawa anchor rules, Ottawa knee rules, and so on. The subarachnoid hemorrhage rule by Jeff Berry from the same university, and also the syncope rules. So it's a, it's a great school. They have a lot of um, uh, uh, amazing um, staff. Uh, physicians and they have a nice program. The city of Ottawa is um, is is an average size city. It has a, about a million uh, population. Um, that's the city itself, but there is a catchment area that has more than that. Um, so your exposure will be good. I see some questions coming. Uh, the questions are from the attendees. I think, uh, would you rather to answer them as the lecture goes or at the end? Uh, whatever you want. What do you guys prefer? Um, we usually keep them at, at the end to uh, and keep That's the flow. Fine. So we'll keep it at the end, all right? Because it, again, as I said, this is not, uh, I have problem with, the, with Zoom in my computer. I always uh, go one slide forward. So, so uh, the program in Ottawa is one of the best. Unfortunately, they stopped taking emergency, they stopped taking candidates from different countries um, um, as a sponsor candidate. They take IMGs, uh, those who will uh, eventually work in Canada, they accept them. But if you're, if you're sponsored by another country and you wanna go back, they do, don't usually take you as a resident. They can take you as a fellow, but not resident. Um, I will just move forward. Second is the University of McGill. It's actually the first emergency medicine program in Canada was the Royal College program was um, at the University of McGill. Um, <clears throat> it's an excellent program. Dr. Steele and many of the famous emergency physicians in Canada graduated from this program. It's an amazing program actually. And uh, it's in the city of Montreal, which is the, to me, it's the best city in Canada. Although people would say Vancouver because of the weather, but I think uh, Montreal is, um, uh, multi multicultural, lots of Arabic food and stuff, but lots of beautiful areas to see. Um, their, their hospital, the new hospital called the Glen Hospital, it's a huge hospital that uh, includes pediatric um, uh, hospital, adult hospital, cancer hospital, and a pediatric cancer hospital. Um, 
His training program is great. They have also the uh, Montreal General Hospital for Trauma. They have a lot of community hospitals affiliated with them. They have many fellowships. I'll talk about the fellowships later in the, at the end of the presentation. McGill is one of the universities that would take Saudi candidates. So if you're thinking to go to Canada for emergency medicine, you, you would have to think of McGill or McMaster University, which we'll, we'll see later on. Um, Again, the weather is harsh in, uh, in the winter, just like Ottawa, they're like 200 kilometers away from each other. Uh, but um, with time, you would like the winter, you would, uh, you would get used to it, and the summer is so beautiful. Um, and next is the University of Toronto. The, it's one of the greatest universities in the world. They have excellent emergency medicine program, they have excellent trauma training, um, and they have uh, the, in the Sick Kids Hospital, they have the Boysen Center there. So if you're interested in toxicology, you will have a chance to join the uh, Clinical Pharmacology and Toxicology Fellowship there. Um, they, unfortunately, they don't take Saudi candidate, but if you finish any of the Royal College programs in any other university in Canada, you would be able to do the toxicology fellowship there. All right, uh, this is, yeah, University of BC in Vancouver. This, um, this city, if you don't like cold weather, then uh, Vancouver is your best chance. Uh, the problem is they haven't taken any Saudi candidates for, for a while now. Um, that doesn't mean that they wouldn't take you if they like your CV. So um, what you do is you just send your CV to the Saudi Cultural Bureau there and they will, they will submit it to the universities and you will know if you have a chance of going there or not. Um, Vancouver is so beautiful. It's not that cold in the winter. You, they might get some snow, but usually it's very mild winter. And uh, it's, it was the best city in the world for years. Um, okay. Uh, University of Queens. This is an Ontario University. It's just um, 150 kilometers from Ottawa, so close to the University of Ottawa. They think they have the best emergency medicine program in Canada. Their program is great. It's a small, small city. Um, so it might not be a lot of fun, but it's close to Ottawa and Montreal, uh, so it's not a, a problem. Uh, but they haven't taken Saudis again for quite a long time. Now, University of McMaster, um, in, in, um, again in Ontario, it's, uh, it's actually the birthplace for evidence-based medicine. They have great uh, emergency medicine program. We have graduates from it in Saudi. Um, uh, as well as from Ottawa and McGill and Toronto, but um, uh, this program um, is well known for the evidence-based medicine and uh, training there is, is also great. It's kind of a small city, um, but you have, you're not too far from Toronto. Um, Western Ontario and London, Ontario. I have little knowledge of this university, to be honest with you, but again, the Royal College programs are standard and uh, their training should be um, should be uh, as good as any other university. Um, Manitoba, Winnipeg, uh, very nice university. Again, a standard Royal College program, but very cold, and they don't take a uh, Saudi candidate as resident, but they may take fellows. The University of Calgary in Alberta, um, again, they, they have taken Saudi candidates before, but now they, they have stopped, but they might take. Um, it's very nice. They have also a Boysen Center there um, uh, in, uh, in the same university and uh, Banff, which is the, the prettiest national park I've ever seen, is very close to you there. I have done part of my fellowship there. Um, I did, uh, I rotate in the Boysen Center there, so I, I really like it. The winter can be cold, but they get days of very warm weather even in the winter. Um, and the summer is really nice and you're not too far from BC. And um, the University of Alberta, which again in, in Alberta in Edmonton, I have little knowledge of that. We used to get residents rotating at the Boysen Center from there. Uh, it's a good program, the residents are excellent, uh, but they haven't taken Saudis for a while now. The University of Dalhousie, no, Nova Scotia, far. Uh, Vancouver is far west, this is far east. Um, 
again, it's a small city. Uh, it is in the small city of Halifax, but uh, they have excellent emergency medicine program. After finishing my residency training and fellowship, I worked with them for a while in one of their uh, affiliated hospitals. Um, their residency program is really good. They have a poison center there, and um, there. Um, but the, again, unfortunately, I don't think they have taken Saudi resident for a while now. Uh, the University of Saskatchewan is north of Alberta, very, very cold area. I don't know if they have taken ever Saudi residents, um, uh, but it's an option. Their training program is a standard uh, Royal College program. I'm trying to go as fast as I can because there is little. Uh, what I care about is your questions at the end. Um, the in, if, you, if you can speak French, the University of Montreal in Montreal takes Saudis as fellows. They might take residents, but you have to be... Uh, uh, at least you have to be uh, able to communicate in French. The same is for University of Laval in Quebec City. Quebec City is so beautiful, but it's very French. It's not like Montreal where you can survive without speaking a word of French. In Laval, in, I mean, in, uh, in Quebec, you would have to speak some French. Just to live, I mean, but for work, for sure, you need French. So uh, this is the list of the universities in the Royal College. I've gone through them all. I, might, I can give you my slides. These are the contacts for the program directors. I don't recommend that you contact them. Um, I prefer that you go through the, uh, the uh, Saudi Culture Bureau. And if you happen to contact them, it would be for a, an elective or something. Um, but you have to be very careful when you do that. Um, the, this is the rest of them. I will give you the slides, so don't worry, you'll, you'll find all these information. So I just wanna go briefly about what is what's, what does the Royal College Program uh, uh, um, structure looks like. So this is from Ottawa, McGill and the other universities, they have very, very similar structure. Um, maybe less of a rotation here and there, but it's almost all the same. So you have the majority of your blocks, which is, each block is about a month long, is in emer adult emergency medicine. We do six blocks of pediatric emergency medicine and uh, one block of EMS or pre-hospital medicine. And uh, in that block, you would, uh, you would uh, go and visit the, uh, the uh, dispatch area for the EMS. You will have, uh, you will uh, uh, do some ambulance rides and you will also uh, do some uh, medevac with air evacuation uh, with a, either, either uh, with a helicopter or a fixed wing. Um, in the, you do two blocks of internal medicine, one block of general surgery, one block of orthopedics, two blocks of anesthesia, one block of psychiatry. These, you mainly focus on emergency psychiatry um, and emergency orthopedic, emergency, and for anesthesia, it's just intubation, basically, and airway stuff, maybe, maybe nerve blocks. Uh, but, but you don't do floor uh, things, um, except maybe internal medicine, you do some of the floor stuff. Um, one block of uh, obstetric and gynecology, one block of neurology, three blocks of ICU, that's, that's adult ICU, one block of pediatric ICU or NICU, and two blocks of cardiology and CCU, two trauma blocks. Most of the universities will allow you to go for your trauma somewhere else. Um, in Montreal, Ottawa, uh, we usually go to either, uh, uh, a Canadian resident go to, uh, to uh, Baltimore or go to uh, um, Florida. The, the Saudi residents usually go to South Africa. And then you have three blocks of electives. You can select whatever you want to do. Um, in the fourth year, you would be allowed to do a, a, an area of interest. You could do ICU, you could do toxicology in your fourth year, you could do medical education, you could do whatever you want in your fourth year, as long as your program director agree, uh, meaning that you have done very well in your uh, uh, first three years of the program. Uh, so I just copied this from the University of Ottawa website um, because you wanna know what are they looking for. So who do we want? Okay, so they want basically a candidate who's really interested in emergency medicine. So your CV should clearly highlight that your focus, uh, uh, fo your focus is on emergency medicine. You're not thinking of another specialty. You have done some electives in emergency medicine. It doesn't have to be with them. It can be anywhere else, but you clearly have done some electives in emergency medicine and you're, you're, you're enthusiastic about it. Um, you're, you're, and beyond that, they want to make sure that you're a, some, somebody who they can live with, they can work with, 
um, uh, uh, and you can they can socialize with. So uh, if you make sure that your CV reflects these, that would be great. If you have some research in your CV, that would be great. Um, but basically, uh, it's 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 most it's what most of you guys have. Uh, all right. So the Royal College have uh, some pillars to their uh, training. They have the CanMed rules. We have the Saudi Meds. Um, basically, they want you to be a medical expert. They want you to be a leader in healthcare. They want you to be a health advocate for your patient, a scholar who has great knowledge. You, you have to be a, a professional, and you have to communicate well with your patients and your colleagues. So this, these are the pillars of their um, uh, 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 training programs, and they have for every program, they have a clear structure of what is expected from you. If you go to the uh, Royal College website, you can download the emergency medicine um, uh, program structure and you will get all the information you need. Um, so when you finish your emergency medicine, most of the um, people would want to do some uh, extra training either in pediatric emergency medicine, ultrasound, pre-hospital or EMS, and uh, uh, some will do epidemiology or research, uh, simulation, um, uh, um, toxicology, disaster medicine, trauma, sport medicine, intensive care, even medical education. See, so these are very common fellowships that uh, 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 graduate of emergency medicine uh, uh, frequently take. I think that's, um, yeah, so just to, to, to maximize your chance, you have to make a good CV. You, you show that you are, your focus is emergency medicine. If you have some research, you can put it there. Um, make sure that you put something about your social life and what you like to do. And then uh, uh, things that might help you get a uh, position as a um, good score in the evaluation examination and um, get to know the program before you go. If you get an, an invitation for interview, just go and see their website and make sure, look what they look for and be familiar with their program. Focus on McGill and McMaster because they still take Saudis. Um, during the interview, make sure that you show you're passionate about uh, emergency medicine and uh, you're a reliable person and fun to work with. And uh, um, just um, side advice, avoid unnecessary show off, like to show that you're mainly focusing on studying, you don't do anything about it from reading and working in medicine. They don't like that because they want a normal person um, who would be uh, easy to live with for five years. And that's about it. Um, I would be happy to answer any question that you guys might have. Thank you so uh, much, doctor. Uh, so do you like to read the questions yourself or do you want yeah, to? Yeah, I can, I can read them. So the first question is, do I need to take NAC exam to apply for residency in Canada? What's a NAC exam? For me, NAC is anesthetic. An NAC exam. Is that an MCAT? Or? You need to take the uh, qualifying examination, MCCEE, -E, um, Medical Council of Canada evaluating, sorry, not qualifying, evaluation examination. Um, we usually do it at the internship or before that. Um, I, I advise you to do it as soon as you finish your maybe fourth year or third year. Um, maybe fourth year is better or early on the internship would be the best because you already have some clinical and basic knowledge. So it's a good time to take the exam. The exam is not too hard and your score in the exam will help you uh, get, get accepted. Um, I hope that answers the question. The only exam you need is the MCCEE, evaluation examination, evaluating examination. Then is it very hard to deal with winter in Canada? No, it's actually initially, the first six months will be depressing, especially if you start close to the winter. You usually start to, in July, so it should be fine. But then the first winter will be a bit hard because you're not used to it. And once you get used to it, it's actually fun. Uh, I miss the winter. Um, uh, you will get to buy the stuff that they, like, like the, the, the warm jackets, the, the, the appropriate shoes, and, and the houses are very warm, so you only wanna dress up when you go out. It's actually sometimes easier than our winter, although the last few years I don't think we had winter, but it's, it's very easy because you dress up and you go out. You don't go out un, 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 unprepared. Um, and uh, with time, you would love it. I, I, I miss the winter because I want to change. I want to um, uh, break my routine. So I don't think it's a problem. How can we fit in the best way with the Canadians? Well, you're gonna fit, they're easy people to, um, 
to, to live with. They're very kind, very nice. They're actually, to me, they're much nicer than the Americans. Um, not that the Americans are bad, but the Canadians are very, very uh, multicultural um, and they're easy to live with. Uh, what they want is a normal person who's um, fun to go with. Um, you're, when you're at work, you work uh, sincerely and you do, you do a good job. But when you're out, you, you're fun to, to be with. Um, and I think you will enjoy it. I still have friends that I communicate with and I, I, I do visits. So uh, it's, this is not an issue at all. How can we know the programs that accept Saudis recently or not? So recently, um, unfortunately, because the, 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 uh, the hospitals in Canada, they're still having deficiency when it comes to emergency physicians. So they stopped taking uh, uh, Saudi candidates now because they want to take, um, they take more IMGs, international, international medical graduates who apply to the Canadian programs and they plan to stay in Canada. So they apply, they apply for permanent residency and then the Canadian citizenship. They want these people because they stay in Canada. They don't like us because we train and then we say goodbye. McGill and McMaster still take Saudis. And I wouldn't just say, you focus on these, only these. These are the, the two universities with the best chance, but you never know. Sometimes they open spots in, uh, in Ottawa, in, uh, in BC, maybe Calgary. So always keep your, uh, uh, your CV open for any of these programs. Um, but uh, the, the, uh, the, the highest chance is with McGill and McMaster. For those who are interns, when they sh when they should take takes electives in Canada before application for residency starts. Okay, so that's a good question. So if you want to take an elective in Canada, this is this has a lot of pros and cons. So you have to be sure that you're ready for that elective. The worst thing you do is to go to an uh, take an elective there and then you show that you're not interested. Meaning, I have seen some uh, student doing elective when I was doing my residency, and the problem is they're not, um, they're not, uh, what, what, what should I say, they're, they're, they're not always on time, they don't show um, enthusiasm when they're working, they're not uh, working that hard, um, they, uh, they just, basically, they destroy their chances. So if you go there, you have to be on time, you have to um, show interest, you have to socialize with people, and you have to show that you're good. So you have to be ready for that. I'm sure you're, most of you are, uh, are good and the expectation is what's expected from an intern. Uh, so it's not hard. But if you come late, if you uh, do not attend, um, they, will, they won't give you um, like a busy schedule, but they expect you to come and they look at you, they watch you. Um, they expect you to come more than what they ask you for. So uh, in order to show that you're, you're, you're keen and you're willing and you're, 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 you're excited about the program. Um, so what I have seen is candidates will just destroy their chances by coming and coming 10, 15 minutes late to their shifts. Um, uh, they, they see very few number of patients. Uh, their assessments are not that great. Uh, not because they don't know, but because they're careless. So don't do that. It's better not to do elective than do an elective and destroy your chances. Um, uh, there are candidates who came and they showed great interest and they worked very well and they got accepted. But that's not always the case. Uh, with regard to uh, contacting the program directors for electives, what do you mean by being careful? What steps should we do? Okay, so uh, when you contact the program director, just send a formal email. Don't send a... And your email has to be formal in terms of wording, in terms of everything. They, they don't know you. They, they, they expect you to be very professional when you, when you contact them. And um, just ask if, if they have an elective, if they have any possibility of electives. And when I say be careful is um, not to be too much insisting when you, when you contact them. Wait for the response, even if it takes uh, a bit of time. Um, you might send one or two emails, but don't be so, um, and don't nag them too much. And uh, again, be careful with the elective. It's, it has its own pros and cons. It can be positive or negative for you. But there is no, no, no harm of contacting the program director as long as you're professional and you clearly state that you're contacting them just asking about the elective. 
what's the best way to apply for an elective in Canada as a medical intern? Well, you probably contact the program director or the secretary for the program director. So what I suggest is you go to the uh, website of the program. All of the programs have their own websites and you can find the secretary, the residency program secretary, and you can email that secretary and she will give you the information. This is the best way to do it. If you can't find her or find him, then you just send a, um, an email to the program director, but I would rather go through the secretary. How long um, they take to reply for an elective request? I have no idea, it's different from place to place. I haven't done an elective there, but I have seen some um, residents, uh, some uh, interns come, uh, and students who came for an elective. They, it takes, you at least have to, to have a couple of months before you apply. Uh, I would say at least, two months minimum, but the earlier the better. Yeah, maybe you give yourself six months would be better. So, uh, because this sometimes get filled up with, uh, because the Canadian student also do a lot, they, they do a lot of electives. So you, you're gonna be competing with them. And of course they, they would uh, prefer to have a Canadian student because they need a lot of um, resident, local residents. So, um, so just send it as early uh, as you can. Um, give yourself a few months before your uh, expected elective. As a medical intern, do we need to pass MCC QE1 exam to get accepted to an elective during internship? No, you don't need the QE1. Actually, the Canadian, the residents from Canada, they do it in their first or second year. You don't have to get the qualifying exam one. You don't have to get it even to graduate. So all you need is the evaluation examination and uh, your medical degree um, uh, and should be fine and, and your internship certificate. So that's all you need. You don't need the qualifying examination. Most of us do the qualifying examination um, just for um, uh, in case you, you, you need it in the future. But you, we do it during residency. National assessment collaboration. Uh, I don't know what's that. Oh, that's the NAC. Okay, sorry. No, you don't need that for, for uh, to get into the, uh, to the uh, Canadian program. All you need is the EE examining, evaluating examination. Can you please talk about lifestyle? Okay, so lifestyle in Canada, okay. Um, <laughs> well, I lived there for a long time, okay? I did my residency fellowship and then I worked for um, a few years. So um, lifestyle is awesome. It was very hard to come back. Uh, it depends on where you live, but most of the cities are nice. Um, uh, Montreal was amazing. Um, lots of uh, fun. At the, in, when it comes to, uh, to a balance between work and activity, um, you will be busy during the week. Um, you will have a few days off, of course, like any other program, and uh, you will be able to get out and enjoy your time. Uh, the lifestyle is fantastic. You will uh, you will enjoy it. Uh, you can uh, you can travel. You can um, enjoy your weekends. You could uh, you could also attend some conferences for fun there because they get they get conferences everywhere. And you can go to the state easily. Uh, you could go to the Caribbeans. You could go south and north. So it's 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 really nice. Um, it's not difficult when you, if you're talking about the shift, um, the, the number of shifts and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the amount of academic work that you're expected to do, I think it's doable, it's very reasonable. Um, as you get uh, senior, so first year you will have more shifts, second year you get a little bit less, third year, just like in Saudi. And you will have enough time, even in your first year, to, to enjoy your, uh, your stay there. Um, how long do I need to study for the MCC exam? It's, it's, it varies from person to person. It's not, uh, preparation for exam is different, even, even for you, for like if you're taking an internal medicine exam, some people will study for months and months, some will study for a shorter period of time. So the longer you take, the, the longer, not, it's not about timing, it's about how much uh, effort you put in into it. If you organize yourself and you have a very clear schedule and a very clear task to do, then you can you can finish it in less than three months, um, for sure. And if to get a good score, just look at what people focus on. Like for example, we didn't know like when you graduate from medical school, you don't give the psychiatry much credit, right? 
But if, you, if you're doing the MCCEE, you will find a lot of psychiatric questions. That's just an example, pediatrics. So you, you have to um, look at um, each area of medicine and see how much they value it. So, uh, so uh, psychiatry almost carries uh, as much waste, uh, weight as internal medicine, although internal medicine is way bigger. So uh, that's, that's what you need to know. And you need to just make a schedule, stick to it, and know what you want to study. And the exam is not that hard, actually. You will get um, a very good score if you prepare well for it. Um, there's a lot of material available. There is uh, a lot of websites that talks about the exam. So um, I don't think it's hard at all. Transportation is, is it by a car or public transport? So in Ottawa, I, have to, I had to use a car. There is no way to live without a car. You can use a bus, but I cannot, I cannot spend like 30 minutes in a bus just waiting to reach in my destination, which is probably 15 minutes or so. So uh, it's not, for me, it's not convenient to go by a bus. Uh, so I had to have a car. In Montreal and Toronto, you have the metro station and you can survive without a car. Um, BC, maybe. Uh, uh, like Vancouver, you maybe survive without a car, but most most uh, uh, residents would prefer to have a car. Uh, although there are a lot of female residents who didn't drive at that time and they survived without a car. Okay, even in Ottawa, the public transportation is better than what we have here. The bus system is well organized. You can read in the bus, um, but for me, I'm used to my car, so I, I just drove. But it's it's easily doable. Where do I recommend an elective? So just looking at your uh, in US and in Canada. Uh, in US, I'm not, I'm not very familiar with schools there, but I think um, I would go to Baltimore or uh, uh, maybe George Washington University. Um, uh, where where Saudi, uh, uh, Saudi uh, students have graduated, I would, I, would, I would go there. So because you, you wanna maximize your chances. And in Canada, an elective, I would, I would think of McGill and McMaster. Um, but again, be ready for that elective. Uh, what is the difference between the local program and the Canadian program? Uh, our local program is really good. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, I think it's North American based. The, the system, the structure of the program is, is very similar. The difference is in Canada they, they, and in the state, they have, in the state I would say it depends on the university, but in Canada it's very standardized. So um, you know when you get into the program, most of the candidates will, will graduate at very, very close or similar level of, of expertise. Their, um, the, the, the program in Canada has been, and, and the state, been there for a long time, so they have clear um, rules and guidelines. We, we, to some extent now, we are well developed and we have similar, uh, uh, similar uh, structure. But I would say um, there they might have more uh, uh, teachers, more professors, more uh, staff to teach you. You will have a flavor of uh, different flavors from different people. The other thing is, um, is um, in, when it comes to the program, there the, the type of exposure may be a little bit different due to different population, but they are quite um, similar. I think our program is good in emergency medicine specifically. Uh, yeah, and the, the the Royal College expectations is very well stated and very clear. How can we show that we are friendly and fun to work with in the interview? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Be yourself. Just don't don't make up things. I have heard stories of people saying that they they spend their free time doing physics, doing math, doing uh, um, reading about medicine. That's not the person that they want. They want a normal person. Tell them the truth. When we're free, we like to hang out with people. We like to do sports. We like to watch TV and watch movies. We're normal people. So that's what they want to hear. And, and when you're during the interview, just, just smile normally. I know it's stressful and they know you're stressed, but if you try to act as normal as possible, that would be great. Um, don't try to overdo it, like laughing at everything, but just have a nice smile. 
talk about yourself as a normal person, talk about your hobbies and your, um, the, the fun things that you like to do, talk about how passionate you are about emergency medicine or whatever specialty you're going through, you're going you're gonna to go through. And, uh, and they, I'm sure they will, they will be happy with that. Do you have any videos, any advice on sponsorship? And it's better to go. Uh, do you have any advice on sponsorship? And is it better to go for full fellowship or residency? Uh, so this is a personal opinion uh, in, in terms um, of the fellowships, uh, fellowship versus residency. I don't regret going through residency. Um, there, but you lose a lot of money because you're gonna be a student. You're gonna spend most of the money you get um, to live there because it's, it costs a lot. Um, you will survive easily, but it's not gonna be like someone who's here getting a good salary as a physician. And, and then you go for a fellowship where you get your full payment where, while you're doing your fellowship. Um, unfortunately, when you go there as a resident and then you do a fellowship, you're still treated as a student when you do the fellowship. While the fellows who come directly from Saudi, they get paid as a they get their full payment as physicians, which is uh, a disadvantage to those who did residency there. But again, you, have, you will get a lot of experience. You will have different life experience, actually, when you live in a different country for quite a while. And in terms of sponsor, you have universities usually are the best sponsors. The problem with the university is when you come back, your payment is not as good as the other hospitals but they are the best sponsors because they give you their residency and usually they allow you to do fellowship. The, the other good um, sponsor is the, um, the, uh, the Ministry of Education, but you won't be paid here in Saudi any amount of money uh, because you're not, you're not an employee. So the best, the best is to get a hospital to sponsor you. And if not, you go to the Ministry of Education. The advantage of the Ministry of Education is when you come back, you can choose the place where you want to work. Uh, if you're sponsored by a hospital, you have to work to work in, in, in that hospital. Uh, it is very hard to get accepted from the first time in Canada. It's not. I actually I got, got, got accepted the first time I applied. Um, but it depends on the chances, depends on how many seats are available. It depends on how you prepare your CV, how you um, present yourself to them. So, and the, the, uh, it's been always difficult to get a position in Canada because this, the, 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 um, the residency programs are limited and the programs that take sponsored residents are very few. So um, if you have time, you should apply to both Canada and the state and maybe Australia too. Um, I wouldn't just um, focus on one country and then get stuck for years trying to find a place, um, it's trying to find an acceptance. Um, and, and don't waste your time looking for acceptance outside if you, um, if you, if you can find acceptance in, within Saudi and then you, you start your training um, because time goes by very fast and you're, um, you don't want to waste uh, a lot of years just waiting for a program. If I want to uh, a surgical specialty, but I did not have a chance to get an elected in a if I want a surgical specialty, but I did not have a chance to get an elective in a medical specialty, would that help? Oh, uh, no. Or it's, yeah, it would be crazy to go there doing internal medicine and then you apply to surgery. They will, yeah, they will, they will question your, they will say he will come to us and then in a few years or maybe even not completing a year, he will change to internal medicine. So you will just um, uh, tell them that I'm interested in internal medicine, but you know what, I get a, uh, a chance to come to your program, I would come. So they, they won't take you anyway. If you go and just show that you're interested in another specialty, they, it's, it's a negative for you. So don't do medicine if you want to do surgery. Don't do medicine if you want to do emergency medicine. Do Go do an elective in the, in the area where you want to um, uh, start your residency. Do you have any information about internal medicine in Canada regarding how many years of residency and it's, is it easier than emergency medicine in accepting Saudi IMGs? Um, 
I am an intern and I haven't decided internal medicine or emergency medicine, can you help? Yeah, so internal medicine is three years and then you do, you can do, uh, after that you, you do your sub-specialization in any of the, like rheumatology, pulmonology or whatever, or you can do a year of internal medicine again, general medicine, and then you'll be a specialist in internal medicine. Um, the acceptance, the schools that accept people from internal medicine are more than those that accept for emergency medicine. So emergency medicine, now you have two universities that accept Saudi uh, sponsored. It's different than IMG. IMGs are those who, in Canada, when you say I am an IMG, that means you're a Canadian who graduated from, a, from outside Canada. Uh, you did your medical school outside Canada, or you're graduated from outside Canada, but you're coming to live in Canada but we are sponsored. Saudi residents are sponsored residents, so they will do their training and they come back. So for internal medicine, I think it, will be, it should be a bit easier or at least more chances than, uh, than emergency medicine. Um, again, but you have to make sure that you, that's what you want to do because this is the rest of your life. It's not about getting accepted. It's about how do I wanna live? Do I wanna live as an internist or do I wanna live as an emergency physician? So that's the biggest thing. Um, the, again, the years are three years for internal medicine, five years for emergency medicine, but three years in internal medicine, then you have to either do a year of general medicine and you will be an internist, a specialist internist, or you can do rheumatology, pulmonology, whatever, or you go to cardiology even. Okay. During an elective, what is required from us? It depends on the school where you go, but mostly, um, uh, as an elective, um, you probably uh, will see patients, will, will do your full assessment, you will have a suggest, suggested plan, they might ask you to do some, to, to attend some um, uh, teaching activity, they may ask you to do some research with them, so that's what they expect from you. What I see here actually is a bit different. Here, the interns here in Saudi, they, they're not given a lot of chance to do clinical practice, so you'll be shocked when you go there. The third year medical students there, they, are, uh, they do more than the interns here. They, they see patients, they do full assessment, they come with a differential diagnosis, they do everything. They contact nursing homes, they, they, they manage as just, just like the residents. The only difference is they cannot sign a prescription and they cannot sign a chart. So someone has to sign their chart for them, but they do everything. We even, when I was a, a BGY1, we split the cases between us and the students. So their expectation will be you do everything, but you are not allowed to sign a chart. You're not allowed to discharge a patient without uh, the permission of the, uh, um, of the attending physician. Um, and that's basically it. academic activity and uh, research will be uh, research will be bonus, but you're expected to attend the academic activity. Uh, does an elective or clinical experience in Canada a must to be accepted? No, not at all. It's not a must. I did not do an elective. How long I should take it? Well, it depends on what they allow you, but I would say at least um, a month or two minimum. Two weeks will be a bit short, but you can do two weeks. Um, but you're gonna be there all the time if you do two weeks. You have to make sure that you're at the hospital all the time so they know you. They need, to, they need time to know you. Uh, why would I choose Canada? It's up to you whether you choose Canada or choose a state or Australia, they're all great places. But um, we have experience with the Canadian system, we have experience with the, with the American system and some experience with the Australian system. If you go to Europe, their programs are not well structured. They're not, um, some of the programs will not even give you um, treat you as, um, as the same way as they treat their residents, they will consider you as an, a, an attachment. Uh, while in Canada and the state, you will be treated just like their, um, their resident. Um, Canada is a nice place, people are nice, and it's very, very extremely safe. That's why it's, it's a good place to train. Big months of electives. I don't know. The Canadian um, uh, students is just like the students here. They go and they know where they want to apply. They have their eyes on certain universities and then they choose the electives um, so that they, when the matching happens, they, they will be close to the time where they finish their elective. So they, the, the, um, the, when they go for the interview, they will remember them. Um, I am not familiar with how they do it, what, what months they do it, but we get elective students all the time. So I expect that any time in the year is okay. Um, not too close to the match, uh, the, the, the interviews is better, 
um, but also not too far from it. Um, but again, if you get a chance to get an elective, that's good enough. Do we need to pass MCCE to accept it? No, you don't need the MCCEE for an elective at all. Even for the fellowship, you don't need an EE -E -E, uh, exam. But to be accepted in residency, you definitely need the EE -E exam. How can we apply for financial guarantee? Uh, that's something that you don't have to worry about. When you send your CV to the, CV to the Saudi Culture Bureau, uh, once you get accepted, the financial guarantee, uh, the Saudi Culture Bureau will, will, will uh, issue your financial guarantee. So you don't have to worry about that. From Ministry of Health or Ministry of Education? Well, it depends. So, uh, see, so if you're going to the state, they might ask you for a financial guarantee before you leave. Uh, and that's... Um, that again goes through the, uh, the cultural bureau. Um, but once you get the acceptance, if you get the acceptance, you ask your sponsor, whoever is your sponsor, to give you the financial guarantee. Mostly you will get it from the cultural bureau, not from, this, the, uh, not from the Ministry of Education, usually from the cultural bureau, because the Ministry of Education communicate with the cultural bureau and then they give you the financial guarantee. Um, do I accept, do I get accepted in R, R1 here in Saudi? Then they give a sponsor or how can you explain? Uh, yeah, so you don't get to R1. You don't get into a uh, uh, training program. You could, if they accept you in a training program and you apply at the same time to, uh, to be sponsored outside and then you get accepted outside, then you can, you can just move, uh, resign from your program and move. They don't like that because you, take, you took a spot from someone who could get, who could get in the local program. Um, usually what we do is you're a service resident, service resident meaning you're not involved in the program and you just, you're a pre-scholar resident basically. You're just applying for uh, a tr training outside the country. Um, uh, so uh, then when you, when you apply, your university will send your papers to the Cultural Bureau and if you're going through the Ministry of Health, you probably have to apply to the website of the Ministry, not Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education you will apply there and they will send your papers to the Cultural Bureau. The Cultural Bureau is very familiar with the programs and they will send your papers to um, different programs. Since we finished the internship by July, we cannot apply for 2021 or am I wrong? Yes, if you apply, uh, you could apply before finishing your internship. You could send your papers and you say you'll be ready by July um, and, uh, and, uh, and you could get in uh, to that year. But uh, if you did not send your papers before, then you have to wait for the next year. That's right. A lot of people get up, get get um, start their residency the next year after finishing their uh, internship, unless you have prepared everything before, and then by by you just finish your internship and you go there for your residency. Um, uh, you mean the med medical certificate? I thought we get it before the end of the internship. The internship certificate will come after. I think you could uh, you could tell them that you're you're just waiting for the certificate, but you're you you submit everything, your transcript, everything, and um, you might because I know some of my colleagues who just we just finished our internship and they left, so they must have done it in a way. Um, uh, for me, I started the next year. I did not have, I did not, I wasn't ready by the end of July. I couldn't go. So I, I started it um, the July after, not the July where I finished my internship. Um, the question is doing the residency there financially, is it good or just enough? It's fair. You will, you will have enough money to have fun. It won't be, you won't be rich. Um, if you're a big spender, then you will have to transfer some money from Saudi, but mostly it's enough because you get, uh, it depends on your, if you're a family or just a single person, uh, but you will get enough to live and you will get about uh, uh, 1500 from the hospital each month and some payment from the university, from the, uh, sorry, from the cultural bureau directory, which is, I think if you're single, it's uh, 2,500 or 3,000 uh, 3, or something like that. Um, it's, it's for sure enough for you to live. You're not going to live a fancy life. If you're depending on the sponsorship money, you, you're going to live a nice life, but not fancy. Or at least I say you're not going to save anything. You're going to use it.
the living there include the car or living expenses? Is it very hard? Uh, it's not too hard. You will have a car, you can buy a car, you can lease a car or you can um, finance a car and uh, the living expenses are not too hard. Um, you can survive, I'm sure. I've, uh, it's actually, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's more than enough. So don't worry about the, the money. Um, unless you're a big spender and you like to uh, waste money, that's different. Uh, for an elective, it depends where you go. How much does it cost for one month of elective? It depends on where you go. Cities have different prices in terms of rent and stuff like that. And it depends on you. If you go and eat in a fancy restaurant every night, that's going to be a lot of cost. If, you, uh, if you're a more a reasonable person, then you, um, you will not have to spend a lot. I cannot give you an exact price because people are different. Um, even for, for an apartment, if you take two bedrooms, it's different than one bedroom. Uh, some people will share, will share an apartment with other students. Some will go for, um, uh, to live with a, with a family or something. So it, it depends. But um, the cost shouldn't be that high for one month. It's not that bad. Like, let's say you will find an apartment um, it depends on the city again, but let's say for Montreal, you find a bar apartment, the cheapest you may find 1500. I don't know if there is something like that price now. Um, and up to like $4,000 a month uh, for rent. So, but you will find a lot of Saudi students there. You can live with them and uh, you'll be fine. Uh, what if I did USMLE step one and two exam when I decided to go to Canada? Was USMLE recognized? No, you have to have the evaluation examination. You, you, they're not, USMLE is not gonna be useful for you. So uh, I think it's smart to do the USMLE, but in Canada, you have to do the E examination. The E examination is much easier, faster to do. Uh, so I don't think they will accept the USMLE only. They need the evaluation examination. Uh, difference in our knowledge, clinical and basic knowledge level between us and the Canadians. No, I don't think there is a difference in knowledge. Um, that we have great students. Uh, we have some weak students. They have, um, they're usually tough on their students. So uh, the, the only difference is what I see is the, the your expectations. So when I see the interns in our um, emergency, their, their expectation is that I do the history and physical examination, or I, I, I fill up the, the, I do this cut work, like filling papers, and that's it. No, there, they expect you to act like a resident. You go, you see the patient, you come up with a differential diagnosis, you come up with a plan of treatment, and you follow the patient until they leave the, the department. This is the difference. Here, unfortunately, the clinical training is not as great. But if you're keen, your basic knowledge is enough that you can practice there very easily. But you have to just uh, know that you're supposed to do everything uh, except like signing prescriptions or discharging patients and stuff like that. Uh, your knowledge, I have no worries about the knowledge. The basic knowledge should be good, but you have to be, um, you have to be uh, committed. You have to do your work, uh, see the patient, do a full job. Um, and, 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 and you'll be fine. And you will get it. When you do an elective, you will get it. Within the first few days, you will notice how people are working and you'll have to function at that level. For fellowships, uh, it doesn't matter. You go to the States or Canada, it doesn't matter. Um, they're all good. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's, you have to think about the residency now before the fellowship, but U.S. and Canada are the same. Maybe uh, some fellowships are not available in Canada, um, but most are available in both countries. What will help in the CV? The CV is just your CV has show has to show your area of interest. Like if you if you apply, like for example, we had some candidates applying to our department. Uh, for sponsorship. We did not accept them because their CV shows that they're interested in surgery. Why are you applying to emergency medicine? Nobody will look at your CV. Nobody will call you for an interview. You need to put stuff that showed your interest in the program that you're applying for. So if, I am, if you're applying to emergency medicine, at least one or two electives in emergency medicine, 
you have to show that you have attended conferences in emergency medicine. You have to show that you have, like for example, ACLS or ACLS instructor. Um, you, uh, you have done maybe some research in emergency medicine. That would help you. Uh, the worst thing is you apply for emergency medicine and your CV is full of surgical like electives. That's, that means that you're, you're, you're just, you didn't get your chance in surgery and you're looking for another program to accept you. Why go abroad if the Saudi program is as good? Well, uh, I, for me, I wanted to go abroad. I wanted to have a different experience and most people will do that. I don't know if we have reached to the level of, this, of the Canadian or American programs. We'll be like crazy fooling ourselves to say that we're a program that's 10 years old is like programs who are 50 years old. That's nonsense. But I think our program is good if you compare it to Europe, if you compare it to any other places. It's an excellent program. Um, um, maybe if I apply now, I would apply to the local program. But, uh, but you have to have, we need to have flavors from everywhere in the world. We need to have experience from different places. In our emergency, we have people who were trained in the US, in different places in the US, different places in Canada, Australia, and Saudi board. So we have all the flavors, which makes it really good. So that's what we want. Um, you maybe want to live outside for a while. You maybe want to um, learn uh, different things, different cultures. So. How can we apply for hospital sponsorship? Is it from the from a website? How can we know more information about hospital sponsorship? I don't know at this time, to be honest, because it's been a while for me. Uh, mostly, if you let's say you're applying for emergency medicine, you will go to the emergency medicine department, talk to the uh, their secretaries, and maybe to the program director and ask not the program director, if you're going outside, not the program director, you go to the head of the chairman of the department or the head of the department and ask if they have any sponsor, sponsorship spots. And they will let you know. Uh, we know if we have sponsor, sponsorship spots or not. So you go to the, to the, to the department and ask them. You have, to, you have to search around. You go to the military hospital, you go to the National Guard, you go to uh, King Faisal, you go to uh, the university, you go everywhere and, and check. And even with the, with the uh, Ministry of Health, you, you ask them if they have any sponsorships for emergency medicine. You visit that department and ask. Is it important that having a fellowship in Canada is, is, is it true that having a fellowship in Canada is more important than having residency? In other words, where, where you do your residency is not important. That's not true to me, honestly. Fellowship is not equivalent to residency. Um, fellowship does not make you, it makes you a, a specialist in that area where you went, but it doesn't, uh, uh, your residency is the biggest pillar in your, um, career. So doing a fellowship is not the same. Doing a fellowship is good for people to come back because some hospital would not give you um, a consultant or a yeah, consultant level without a fellowship. That's why people think it's more important. But for a career development, residency is more important than the fellowship. Fellowship is an extra uh, thing that you add to your CV, but residency is the most important. If your residency program is not good, then it doesn't matter where you did your fellowship. But some hospital would not give you a consultant position unless you get a fellowship somewhere outside the country, mostly in North America or Australia or Europe. How can we prepare our, for our electives there? How can we overcome the gap between us and the Canadian? You don't have a gap. Good students here are maybe better than Canadian students. So you don't have a gap. You, have, you shouldn't think this way. You want to do the elective, you're good to go. The only thing is, when you go there, just make sure that you're, you're set, your schedule is clear, you're, um, you're ready to go to your work on time, you're, uh, you're, you're happy to spend more hours in the hospital than you usually do. Um, so you just you show them your enthusiasm. You show them that you're very interested and you want them to take you. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's not that your knowledge is not good. No, you're, 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 you're ready to go. The only thing is, when you work, just do your work diligently. Go see patients, think about the patients, how I'm gonna manage these patients, what should I do? If you cannot figure it out, try to think, 
How could I help this guy? How could I find out what's the problem? Not like here, the, the, some, some of the interns, some of them are great. Most of them are great. But some of them would come to you and just tell you the story. And when you ask them what to do, I don't know. Or sometimes I have a patient with a neurologic issue and I ask about a neurologic examination. They did not do it. That's really bad because you go, you want to show the best of you. You don't want to go there and show that you're, 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 you're not even willing to, uh, to do your job. So... And you go there, you see the patient, you do your history, physical and um, differential, that's, you, you're going to be fine. But don't come to me and tell me about a patient who has headache and then you, don't, you didn't do a neurologic examination. This is bad. And this is happening, unfortunately, in our hospital. I, I'm not blaming them. It's the culture, unfortunately, but this has to change. Okay? Uh, I, I go and I see a psychiatric, they go and see psychiatric patients, they come without any information. Why? We're not good with psychiatric history. That's not an excuse. I'm sorry. You, you've gone through medical school, you should know this. Um, again, most of our interns are great, but some will do this, and, and that's what I'm advising you not to do, is don't show that you, um, you're, you're, you're weak or you don't, you're not keen to learn or you're not willing to do your job. This is what they don't want to, to, to hear. Uh, otherwise, your, your level should be great for them. We, they're not expecting you to be a consultant or a specialist in that field. They're expecting you to be a good medical graduate. That's it. And most of you are great, uh, so I have no worries. How can we apply for a pre-scholar resident spot? Pre-scholar resident. Ah, you mean in, in here? Well, it depends. Again, you go to the department, you ask them, do you have sponsorship for um, scholarship? They will tell you, we have a spot, and the interview is this day. Uh, so uh, you just have to visit the department. What I advise you is, if you're, for example, interested in emergency medicine, you do one elective in Methylan, for example, King Saud University. You do another elective at National Guard or, or, the, or King Faisal. If you, if you hear that they have more spots, you maybe want to do their, your elective with them. But if you don't know, then you have to choose uh, one or two hospitals where your chance, uh, where you, you have the maximum chance. And then you ask them uh, if they have any spots for sponsorship. So you have to do a search. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a database that we apply. And, and I don't know. It's been a while for me. Uh, so I don't know if the match system has changed, if there is any match system for scholarship. I know there is a match system for the Saudi board. But I don't think there is a match for sponsorship. Is Canada cost of living high? Uh, honestly, when I came back, I didn't feel any difference. The... the, the um, uh, the prices are the same, everything is the same, except that you, you, um, if you convert from dollar to real, you might feel there is some difference, but with what you get paid, the, the cost of living is not too bad. Uh, it's very hard. I cannot give you an amount of money. You have to, you, let's say, you want to go to McGill to do an elective. You go and you search apartment rates in Montreal in the month you want to go and you check how much are the prices. You, you put that down. This is the most cost, the, the flight, the apartment. The food is not a problem, especially if you eat at home. Um, if you don't go to fancy restaurants, you should be fine. So go and check the cost of the apartment and check the, um, the cost of um, flight. Uh, these are the biggest costs. And then the others uh, should be reasonable. Um, what I was gonna say, yeah, you're not gonna be, if you're, if you're concerned about the cost, then you're not gonna be eating in a fancy restaurant every night. You maybe go once a month or once a week or whatever. If you're going for a month, once a week should be okay. So you, the cost is different from person to person. I cannot give a number. Is it easier to live single or as a family? Wife and husband only. Uh, oh, wife and husband is fine. It's, it's, it's just like single. <laughs> but um, it depends. Actually, when you're sponsored, when you are sponsored by the Saudi Culture Bureau, they will pay you for a family. And that's actually nice because you get enough payment. And even for every, every kid, you get a small increase in the payment. So you shouldn't be worried about payment. You're not going to save much. That's the difference between those who did the Saudi program and the, the, those who went for a scholarship. The saving is way less. You're not going to save much, but you're going to live okay. Do they focus a lot on medical knowledge and electives? Um, they focus on both, the medical knowledge and behavior. So um, the medical knowledge is not usually a big deal, but 
if your medical knowledge is really bad, if they ask you what does, um, like uh, if they show you an, a CBC and there's anemia there and you don't know what is it, it's, it's really bad. The basic stuff, you have to know the basics. Um, uh, so medical knowledge, of course, matters because how do they know that you graduated from medical school? Um, so they, they will check your medical knowledge, but it's not as important as your behavior. Your behavior is way, way more important. So if they have concern about your behavior, forget about getting accepted. Um, your medical knowledge, they might take you because they, they know they're going to teach you and they, they know you're going to get better. And I'm not concerned about the medical knowledge of our graduates. Most of them are okay. Where should I apply if I want a max, um, the maximum chance to get accepted, Canada or US? I think you have to apply to both. I don't think there is uh, such a thing as uh, applying to one place. Uh, the schools in the US are more. So if you have the USMLE, your chance, of course, is going to be greater because this, there are more schools there, especially if we're talking about emergency medicine. Um, but I think the best is to do the USMLE and EE because the EE exam is not hard and it's not going to take time. You can do it. It's been, did I, hello? Yes, yes, we're here. Um, That's think, all of that, right? Yeah. Um, thank you so much uh, for the lecture in general and um, for answering, to be honest, the questions, Yanni. I think this, this would most help, I guess, the people uh, here. So thank you so much for your time uh, and for presenting the lecture. Uh, we were glad to have you with us. You're most welcome. Thanks for... Uh, uh, giving me the chance and I wish you all good luck. Don't think, the only thing I would say, don't think that you're less than the other. You might be better than them. I mean, the Canadian or the American or whoever they are. Just, I'm giving you just the negative things that I see here because I want you to avoid them. Most of our uh, graduates are great. I have no concern about them. The things that I mentioned is just things to avoid doing because I have seen this in my, yeah, in front of me people applying for the program there and doing electives and not doing a good job when they do their electives. So don't trap yourself. Don't put yourself in trouble. Sure. Okay. Um, Allah